Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today's video is one of a three-part series on how to export tracks out of Logic. Today we'll dig into the export dialog and what all the different options mean. In video two, we'll dissect how to export multi-output instruments such as drum kit designer. In video three, we'll dig into how to export auxiliary channels and effect sends and all the routing that you set up in your projects. Now, perhaps you need to export your tracks to be sent to another mix engineer, or maybe you need to export stems for live use. Whatever the case may be, Logic has you covered. It does take a little bit of know-how to figure out how to export everything, but once you've got it, it's pretty easy. So I have a project here, small little riff that I wrote, kind of punk rock, hardcore, and let's just assume that this is a completed song and I'm happy with it and I'm ready to send it out. Real quick, let's just take a listen to what I have here. I've used Kyle to write the drums and then further fine tune with Convert to MIDI. I have some guitar tracks using Amp Designer and a bass track. Let's take a listen. Okay, pretty simple riff, but nonetheless, this is my song. I love it. I'm ready to send it out. So in this particular case, I want to export each of my tracks as their own audio file. I want to export my drum kit as one audio file, the guitars each as an audio file, and the bass. So I'm going to select the top track in my session, and then I'm going to go down to the bass track and hold shift and click. Now all the tracks in my session are selected. A really important point to keep in mind when it comes to exporting tracks out of Logic is Logic can only export what is in the main window, which is this window right here. Even though I have routing in the mixer for reverb, for parallel compression, because those tracks aren't in the main window, they won't be exported. And we'll dig into that in the third video. All right, so I'm ready to export. I can either use Command E to open the export dialog or go to File, Export. And we're gonna go down here to nine tracks as audio files. Now it's important to take a moment and just question, how come does it say nine tracks as audio files? If we look at our project, I have one, two, three, four, five, and six tracks that I can see. That's because there are hidden tracks that have also been selected for export. Use key command H to unhide those tracks. We can see that there are actually three other tracks within this main window. In my opinion, I would prefer that Logic didn't select hidden tracks, but it's pretty easy to get around. If I just select the hidden tracks here, and if I drag them all three either to the top or bottom, now they're outside the range of what's contained within the other tracks. So if I hide them again, select my drum track, down to my bass track holding shift. If I then go to file, export, we now have six tracks to export as audio files, perfect. So now the export dialog presents us with a lot of options. First, we have the range. Our first option is trim silence at file end. What will happen is, is Logic will begin to export all the tracks. It will start at bar one and work its way all the way to the project end marker. The project end marker is signified by this line with a disclosure triangle to the right of the line. Logic will then identify when the tracks completely stop playing and it will identify where the silence begins. So any silence after the fact will be removed from the audio file, which is pretty handy because sometimes your project end marker can end up being, you know, quite a ways away from the rest of the song. You know, Logic tries to give you a lot of wiggle room to produce and create a track. We don't want 50 plus bars of just silence at the end of our audio files. It's just kind of unnecessary. So it's a really handy option to trim silence at file end. Now we also have the option to export the cycle range only. And this is for specific selections. You don't want to export all parts of every track. So in this case, if I make a selection using command U, selecting my drummer track. So now the cycle range has roped itself around this particular drummer region. If I select all my tracks, Logic will export all of these tracks, but only what is contained within the cycle range. So it'll start at bar nine and will end at bar 17. We then have the option to extend file length to project end. Now this is the opposite of trim silence at file end. So if we back out of here and we remove the cycle range, any silence after the audio, so in this case from bar 26-ish, 
way past bar 81, all of that silence will be included in the final export file. So if you have a guitar solo that maybe hangs around for 20 seconds in the middle of the song, in this case, I have a rhythm guitar track that only plays from bar nine to about bar 17, even though the guitar has no more audio past bar 17, all of the silence afterwards will be included in the audio file. Now, I prefer to set my project end marker pretty close to the end of my projects, and I prefer to export trim silence of file end. I think that's the most usable for most people. Now, if you're exporting your tracks to another engineer or another bandmate, best practice to have every exported file start at the same bar, which typically is bar one. This is easily achieved with trim silence at file end. It's just when we send our audio files out to someone else, they then have the responsibility to have to line up all the audio files at the same place. And if everything starts from the same bar, even though there's silence, before certain tracks, it will be included. And then no one has to line anything up. They can just drag and drop them and everyone's happy. It's easy to work on. We then have different save formats to pick from. We have AIFF, WAVE, and CAF. You're welcome to use whatever feels best to you. I stick with WAVE because it seems to be universal. Everyone can work with it, but you're welcome to use whatever works for you. Bit depth, we have different options. 8-bit, 16, 24, and 32. I stick with 24-bit. That provides more than enough resolution for our tracks. Even if the session is 16-bit, if I need to export the audio files, I will export 24-bit because once you add processing and other things, it sort of increases the complexity anyways of the session. For multi-output software instruments, we'll skip that for now. Bypass effect plugins. Now, if we dig into the mixer here, we can see I have plenty of effect plugins going on. And for the guitar tracks, Amp Designer is a significant part of the sound. I want to include the processing for those tracks. In this case, if I make my selection, and open the export dialog, I'm not going to enable bypass effect plugins because with this enabled, all of those amp designer processing will be removed. So we'll just have clean DIs for each guitar track. For my drummer track, I may want to bypass the channel EQ and compressor because the mix engineer who's going to mix this is going to want to use their own processing. So I can bypass that on an individual channel basis and then it won't be included in the sound when I export. But if I decide that all of my plugins are not useful to the mix engineer, then I could just select this and bypass everything in the mixer in terms of plugins. For include volume and pan automation, a quick aside that is directly related. There's this myth that Logic only exports stereo files, which is not at all the case. This is totally not true. Why this relates, let's just select the bass track here and I'm gonna bounce in place for now. I'm not gonna export. I'll use control B to bounce in place. And then I bounce this bass track, which we can see, if we take a look, it's a mono track, it only shows one signal. When I bounce in place, it's going to bounce as a mono file. And as we can see, it's still a mono file. The times that Logic exports stereo is when we bounce our whole song. So if I use key command, command B, and open the bounce dialog, presumably this song is gonna need a left and a right signal. It's a stereo WAV file or MP3, so there will be stereo information. But if I go into the bounce dialog to bounce this region in place and I select include volume and pan automation, what will happen is, is Logic will now pan the bass track as if it were a stereo file. And as we can see, the bass is now in stereo. The reason is because we've indicated to Logic that there is some degree of panning occurring on this track. Whether it's just panned to the side or it's panning in real time with automation, we are going to need a stereo track for that to take effect. Thus, Logic exports or bounces in stereo. So in this case, when we go into the export dialog and we select include volume pan automation, Logic will export all of our tracks as stereo tracks. So keep this in mind, if panning is a big part of your arrangement, whether it's with automation or not, it's not, then I suggest disabling this. Any stereo tracks will be exported as stereo tracks. Mono tracks will be exported as mono. The world at large will be very happy. Then we have the option to normalize. Now, normalization is typically a kind of a dirty word in audio, and it doesn't have to be. It's just normalization is the process of taking audio information and maximizing its loudness so it hits the top of the meters. It doesn't clip, but it maximizes audio. Now, maximizing sounds like a kind of a good thing, right? But if a mix engineer is receiving these tracks or a mastering engineer is receiving a mix to master, it's not the best. It doesn't leave as much room for those engineers to do the processing that they need to do. I mean, it's not insurmountable, but it's just not good practice. So we can see here if I control B, and then if I set this to on, remove the volume pan automation, hit okay, 
we can now see that Logic has maximized this track. The loudest point in this audio region was right about here, so it's maximized to that loudest point. We do have the option of setting normalization to off in both the bounce and export dialogues, but this can be a problem. So if I add a gain plugin to this bass track, and then I jack up the gain by 24 decibels, and don't worry, I'll make sure to mute the track. I'll also mute all the other tracks in the session. Now let's watch the bass meter in this particular instance, and I'll even drive this up too. So in this case, we can see that the bass track is exceeding zero decibels by 17 decibels. And this is a problem. We're clipping our track, and when we export or bounce this track, what's going to happen is, is Logic is going to just chop this bass track off at zero, because in the real world, we can't exceed zero decibels. This will introduce massive distortion to this bass track and will hurt the fidelity of the track. So when we set our normalization to off and we don't bypass our plugins, watch what happens. Yeah, that looks terrible. So let's back up here. In this particular case, I really should just remove the game plugin, but perhaps it's a huge part of my sound for who knows what reason. In this case, if we export or bounce with normalization set to overload protection only, Logic is going to identify any tracks that are potentially clipping upon export or bounce, and then it's going to reduce the volume so it's no longer clipping. And just like that, our track's loudness is maximized, but it's reduced enough so it's not being hurt by distortion on export. So let's remove this game plugin. And then we have the option to add the resulting files to the project browser. So if I select this and I hit export, these audio files, once they're exported, they'll be reintroduced to our project browser here. Using key command F, we open it up, and then we can drag it into the session if we deem it necessary. Finally, we have the option to quickly tell Logic how we want these tracks to be named. So in most cases, we would have the track name, but perhaps you like to add your own custom flair to your track. So perhaps we'll call this. So in this case, my name's Chris Vandeviver, so I added CV and then added the custom tag to the patterns for different names. Perhaps we want to add the day of the year, the month, and even the year. We have a variety of different options that makes it very quick, but if you need a custom name, that's just as easy. Lastly, I just want to point out that perhaps we have a track stack of our different tracks, right? So if I select all the guitar tracks in my session and I create a track stack with shift command G, I now have a track stack for the rhythm guitars. And maybe I want to just export a stem of the guitars. I don't want to export each guitar individually. I want to export them as a group. Easy enough. Once we've created our track stack, I can use key, command, command E to open the export dialog. And when I export this, it'll be exported as one stem instead of four different guitar tracks. In my sessions, I often will have track stacks for drums, for guitars, for bass, for backing vocals. So that saves you if you need to export the groups as different stems. You don't have to export 50 different files. Instead, you can export 10 or 12. So that concludes the first part of this three-part series on exporting. I hope that was helpful to you. In the next video, we'll dig into multi-output instruments such as Drum Kit Designer. As always, if this was helpful to you, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new posts, new videos, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.